Hello, my name is Norman Fong, and I'm with Norman Store Kit and OKS.com. And today's topic will be uh, growing the phenolopsis uh, formosanum. Uh, the this species might be sounds new to you, but it's actually uh, has been gone through a lot of changes. It is used to be called phenolopsis a marvelous variety formosanum, and then got changed to Alphodelis variety formosanum. But now, uh, about a couple of years ago, uh, Royal Hort uh, Kew Garden at the Ingram have recognized, and I think sh it should be recognized as a separate species. And so it's now, if you have any label, it just says uh, Aphrodite's variety for Mosana, uh, cross of Aphrodite's. It is now officially, uh, if you enter for judging, uh, as OK Society, it is now, uh, at least for now, uh, recognize us, Phenonopsis former sauna. And I have picture here, and uh, former sauna is the island of Taiwan. That's where I, I was born. And there's only two species, and many of you have listened to my talk before. There's only two species that is native to island of Taiwan. Uh, this is one of them, and the second one is Phenolopsis equestris from the Orchid Island of the Taiwan. So even though Phenolopsis produce a lot of in Taiwan, but it's actually the only two native species. Now, what's the difference between uh, Alphodelis and Amabilis and now Formosana? The characteristic for the, the Taiwanese of a Formosa, Formosana Phenolopsis is, well, first of all, the leaf color. The leaf is actually very jade green versus some of the, the complex hybrid of like standard big white. Uh, usually a deeper green. And Formosana is very important species. It's actually my first final analysis when I was like 10 years old in Taiwan. And at that time, uh, back in, in the 60, late 60, early 70, uh, there's no artificial propagated uh, method for this particular species. So all the species when I was a kid growing up in uh, uh, Taiwan is all jungle collected, okay? So there's actually two areas of the uh, Taiwanese uh, uh, Formosa Island uh, uh, species. One is called Da Wu. And this is actually, this is what I've been, you know, sibling because it's very important we restand and conservation for this particular species because Da Wu is one area at uh, Taitong or the eastern side of the island of Taiwan. And that's the area every time the hurricane hit the island always come to the east side of the island. And this, of all the Aphrodites, of all the white Phenolopsis species, because me, most of them are from the Philippines, okay, and island. So Philippines is very tropical, very tropical. Aphrodites, or f f variety Formosana, or now Phenolopsis Formosana, this is the only species that is I can, can tolerate for a short period of time below 50 degree. In fact, uh, I've been doing a lot of research, they are actually been uh, documented that this species in the area of Dao and eastern part of the Taiwan island had down to as low as 40 degree Fahrenheit. Now that's just very important because none of the regular amabilis uh, of that is from the Philippines can tolerate that kind of low temperature. And so that's one advantage of to grow this particular species. So if you are uh, live in Florida, I just uh, go to Tem uh, Tamiami Orchid Show. So every time you have a freeze or, uh, to, uh, or low temperature coming to Florida, you know, yes, the Vanda, you first thing you move in, this is the Vanda. But if you do have an uh, of a uh, variety for Mosana or for Mosana, that's okay. Leave it outside. They just don't water it. Okay, they can actually tolerate for at least three nine below fifty degree, 
In fact, the low temperature is going to stimulate even more flowers coming up. And so nice about this species is also very disease resistant. I, you know, my, at my nursery, you know, we don't spray any fungicide on it, but I have yet rarely lost any of this particular species to rotting. Even sometimes when we had to do wa late watering and the water might be stay overnight in the crown on the foliage, no problem because the DNA is very disease resistant. Now, I want to show you the two here. So this is what we call the lime breeding. Okay, this is still considered of Formosana, but it's not the wild strain. Okay, so this is here. If you're looking for really pure uh, disease resistant strain, you want to get this wild strain of Da Wu strain. So this is what we call the lime breeding of a uh, form, uh, a marble Formosana or Formosana. It had bigger flower. But this is, to me, this is sort of like hyper-improved uh, species. They're not in, in the wild, they didn't have the wild strain anymore. And this is what we call the 4N, the tetrapod. The 4N strain has bigger flower versus the 2N. Okay, they're bigger, but they don't have as many flowers. And uh, to me, I think this is something about the pure species. The two N species is very, very charming. Okay, uh, alrighty. And you're also gonna notice that too, the, uh, the, uh, as for as a species, this species genetically also give you really long, narrow stem. In fact, sort of arching spike havoc. And the flower spike is also very J green, just like the leaf or so. And Jeff, can you focus the lip, or if you can get inside the lip? The characteristic for this particular species, inside the lip, there's a, the silo inside the lip had two of the three striking inside, and that's also the characteristic of the Formosa. Okay. And so what I present you today, these are all the first bloom seeding from seed. Uh, and you might ask me if, what's the difference between this one here and this one here? Okay. They're all from the same seed pot. But you notice the, the, the difference in height on this. Okay. This is what this is what the temperature will effect will do with the with the flower spike length. This is grow in night temperature of 65 Fahrenheit. This is grow at different greenhouses. Uh, is the temperature dropped down to about 60 degree. We try to keep the minimum temperature at 60 degree, but it, because of cold temperature, sometimes it, may, it might not able to maintain the high. So sometimes ranging from 58 to 60. Okay, so the difference is, the, if you want to get this flower strength higher, go warmer. So if you have an under light uh, set up and you have uh, the heat map, uh, you can actually put this next to your novelty fan analysis at 65 degrees Fahrenheit. You're going to stretch out the, uh, the flower length. Uh, it's okay. So this is actually go at much lower temperature, 50 degrees, not 5 degrees, cooler at night. So you're going to have a lower spike uh, length, even though this is all the same age. And it's also very normal this time of the year especially when they're in bloom. People always got panic when they see the bottom leaf turn yellow. There's nothing wrong with it, okay? This is just a, a physiology, physiology response to the cold night temperature, okay? And then uh, if it really bothers you, 
or if you want to take this time to judging or to okay show yes you can uh, uh, remove the footage you know we when you uh, sterilize the, the, the uh, sterilize the tool to avoid any uh, disease or, or virus infection personally I just let it dry off naturally I, mean, I always say many many times when the plant leaves detach themselves dry out naturally they send back a lot of nutrient back to the plant and also when they detach the area it already sealed so you're not creating the wound okay so let's do it the natural way okay now so the culture on the front of this species is very easy this one is also a very very good object to mount it as uh, mount it on the cork you can also put it in the basket and tilt it if you go outdoor okay now and then they just get better with age this particular plant if you focus on the picture this is where I get the seed uh, from uh, joint orchid Mr. Lee have this particular plant for over 50 or 60 years so the plant itself is only about this wide but it keep getting cakey from the side so the so the plant actually have about maybe about 15 plant took all together so when they do flower it's a it's a big show and the actually uh, the flower is also earlier than other uh, uh, alphabetics uh, from the Philippines okay so picture this all this st st standard what we have today probably most of them have the Filipino, Filipino species of that is, okay. But a lot of the modern day multi floor especially some of the, the work being done in Taiwan, they also have involved with this. So this is why the label is very important. If the label has say, uh, it's something crossed with a marvelous Formosana or now the Formosa, that's a good guide indication for you this had a gene for the cool growing species and also the disease resistant now I also did some experiment they also had a, a quality of sequential flower especially if they under cool temperature now may, assuming many of you have the the my normal two-in-one cakey paste okay and this is what I did and I want to share this experiment with you about four months ago this is the one I never cut, cut off the spike from last year what I did earlier is at the end of the tip instead of cutting back the spike and then it's all over I what I did is um, assuming this is like this so we use now the temperature is cooler during the day and cooler at night this time of the year so if you do a tap of the two-in-one mega dry the cakey paste. paste okay instead of give you cakey okay and you can actually try this okay if, if you work on the species it will work on the hybrid notice that this is the first bloom seeding so the, the first bloom seeding they usually don't have a lot of flower because they are baby so if you want to continue because right now it's already stopped right so all you have to do is do a, a tap of the cakey paste at the tips of the spike okay now given the situation we have is winter time cool day cool the day and cool the night so the normal uh, tool you want cakey paste remember it has the organic kinetin originally from the corn okay so what this does is it's going to stimulate because remember it has cytokinin cytokinin is a female uh, plant hormone so it will continue to have flower so by the time at the end of two months when this all finish you're going to have continue of this all the way to June okay now what do you do at the end of June you two choice you can cut a, cut a spike off and let the plant rest 
or by June or July is what? Warmer day, warmer night. You can do the same cakey paste. You can put it on the tip here. Guess what? It might give you a cakey. Okay. Or you can also do it in the fall, in the summertime. On the side bracket here, okay, just remove the side protected uh, bracket. Put a cakey paste here in the summertime, in July, June or July. Then you can propagate a cakey by itself. This is why I always say, uh, one of my toolbox always have this. When I go to the greenhouse, I see something need to be done. If you got a cakey, or a uh, cakey is actually better than stem prop. Uh, it's actually is the best way of propagating. You got gene you got one plant genetically. You don't need a fancy laboratory. It, you don't need people to do it for you. And if you got a cakey, it just pay for itself. You can use a cakey as insurance as a backup. Okay. Or you can also use that cakey. You got every plant one, two, three, four. There's four no here. This one. One, two, three, four, five. There's five, four no here. The older one down here is too old. The physiology is too old. You got a good two and three. If the pro providing the plant is very strong, very healthy, and very good root system, you can actually propagate from three no. You can propagate three plants. Okay, so we will get into, I should we'll do a, a segment on, on artificial propagated or cakey paste. Uh, propagation on, on fan analysis, then you can have three plants of, if you have a choice, uh, a water plant. Uh, that way you can do a tray with some other people, okay? So uh, the feeding is very similar. Uh, again, this can take cooler night temperature. So if you're in Florida, don't worry. They can, they have been proven down, I have, I think two years ago, we lost some power on the border and we have two weeks of fan analysis below 50 degree okay and this is one particular species survived the two weeks and also the two weeks we did not have what uh heat uh, we did not water them at all it's okay to let the plant stretch but it's in their dna okay so uh if you interested in this amazing amazing species I can guarantee you, we have an original, okay? And it's my first orchid, and it's my uh, uh, bird country. So I always have my best interest to retain this species. And we have gave this species to the Huntington Botanic Garden. And so that way they can preserve the true uh, two-in form of this uh, Phenonalsa formosa. And it, it should have, have more than one because they all from sea and they have different variation. Okay, so this is actually uh, conclude today's segment. And uh, so, uh, species is wonderful to have. It's never go out of fashion. And, and beside, the, even when they're not in flower, it's a beautiful jay green foliage. Okay, and very compact by comparison to other uh, Alphotelis from the Philippines, that big leaf. Okay, so anyway, if you never try this species, Give it a try. Okay, thank you.